All right, so let's start by writing ourselves a binary tree. Um, so here is a tree, it is an empty tree, right? Nothing much to look at. Just like you can have an empty list, you can have an empty tree. So the next thing we will draw is, let's draw our first node in here, we will label it A. So A, again, you can have a tree of one element, just like you can have a list with that one element, right? No shocker there. Now, rather than having items before or after, right? Um, well, before or after a node, right? We would have like that, rather than having that kind of uh, relationship um, like we would in a list. Instead, the other items in the tree are connected by uh, branches or links to other nodes. So let's go ahead and write B and C into there. Now A's children are B and C, um, and B's parent and and B's parent is A, and C's parents are A. So in a binary tree, the reason it, the term we use the term binary is because each node can have what we call two children, the left child and right child, up to two, and that's it. A ternary tree, something with three, you know, in other words, three, could have three children, right? You could have A, B, C, you could have B, C, D as your children, but we're dealing with binary trees because they're, you, as you'll see later on, we can kind of reduce everything into a binary tree. So we'll stick with the binary tree. My children are B and C. Um, now you only have one parent. B's parent is A, C's parent is A, right? And my children themselves can have up to chil two children, right? B or C, um, D and E. And this node over here, C can have either, you know, it can have two children. It can have two children itself, right? Or it could just have one child, either left or right, it doesn't really matter. If you have one child, you can have a left child or a right child. So, no problems there, okay? So, um, now again, the relationship between uh, the parent and your child, between the parent and your children can be generalized, right? B's grandparent is A, not really a formal term, but everybody uses it. A's grand uh, D is a grandchild of A, um, but we, the formal term that we use to abstract out this relationship rather than going great, 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 great grandparent is that, or grandchild, is that we say that A is an ancestor of D, D is a descendant of A. So e, D, E, F are all descendants of A, so are B and C, okay? Now these nodes, at any node that has no child is a leaf, right? So D, E, and F are all leaves here, and if we add G over here, E is no longer a leaf, D, G, and F are the leaves, okay? Any node that is not a leaf is what we call an internal node, and we can call leaves alternatively external nodes, all right? So what other kind of things can we do? So let's see, we've got our, so we've got this kind of parent-child relationship, right? going on here. We've got the, um, right, A is the parent, uh, but then we extend that. We also have sibling relationships like B and C. D and E are sibling because they have the same parent. Right, what about if you have, what if your parents are sibling? What about, what's the relationship between E and C? We might say there's a uncle, nephew, or aunt, niece relationship going on there. It, you can use that terminology, it's not formal, but everybody will understand what you mean. Just like if we call these links or branches, everybody will understand what you mean just fine. Okay, the final thing that we want to talk about is uh, height, right? So we can split this tree up into levels, right? This, has, this tree has four levels there. Um, and that's formally defined as basically the longest, the number of nodes in the longest path from the root to a leaf, right? Right here, there's a path uh, from a root to a leaf that's three long, but this is the longest one. There's four nodes in this path from the top to the bottom. So we say this tree is height four, and there's four levels. It's level one, level two, level three, level four. It's kind of super intuitive, not too hard to think about. The big thing is that, um, is that this height can be calculated recursively. My height, uh, my, uh, the height is, um, you know, one plus the height of my of the height of my left uh, subtree, 
or my right subtree, whichever is bigger. And I just used an important term there again, subtrees, right? The entirety, this entire structure is completely recursive, meaning that we've got that this over here can be, can, when we program this, we're going to consider this as its own tree and this as its own tree with the root starting at B, at B. And here we'll consider this as its own tree with its root starting at C, right? This will be its own tree. Right? So, and then when we, if we end up at E, we'll consider E the root of its own tree when we do our programming. We consider each node to be the root of its own tree. Um, and that makes it very convenient to program because we can treat, basically treat all parts of the tree exactly the same. Um, all right, so now we'll go ahead and discuss what a binary search tree is and the rules for putting in a binary search tree.